You're listening to the Monday Night Community Show with Daniel on BRFM. This is the Daniel Monday Night Community Show on demand through YouTube. Thank you very much for choosing to listen to us through this method. If you'd like to keep up to date with when I add new interviews, then subscribe to this channel. Press your ear to the rail, episode 4, the event. The fire wagon at the end there, sea service, when, when there's a line side fire, which I've only known it happened once during the beer festival last year. <laughs> well, I was busy drinking beer at the time, so all I know is that uh, there was a line side fire on the embankment up towards the uh, halt by Asda and they took that up there and it's got quite a large water tank on it and they were able to uh, spray the fire and put it out but of course they have to be careful to get the the diesel which pushes it on on this end of it because otherwise the diesel has to go through the fire first before the fire wagon gets there it's easy enough to push it out and then bring the diesel out from the loco shed and off up the line it goes Each year, the mill paid for them to have a day out and they'd take half the staff from the mills and take them down to the coast for the day. And then a fortnight later, they'd take the other half of the staff down to the coast. But I don't think the staff had any more holidays than that. They had a one day off a year. It was hard work. It's not very nice being on the footplate when that wind's going through it, and obviously it, it's sort of like a tunnel. But uh, that's why it's nice to ride in one of these clothes wagons in the winter. <laughs> come up to me, right up to my face and say, here Dorothy, what's the strangest thing that ever happened at the SKLR? Well, as you might expect, it was a very strange happening indeed, and when you're a bit older, I might even tell you about it. But for now, I'll just speak about the second strangest incident. It all began with a pigeon. It fluttered down onto one of them old locomotives and began hopping about from one foot to the next. That bird's daft, we all said. It took old Albert from the signals and telegraph department to realise what was really going on. That's no ordinary pigeon, he said. That's a carrier pigeon. And he was right. Wrapped around its leg was a message from some Scandinavians. It read something like, Dear Sittingbourne and Kelmsley Light Railway, we are the Scandinavians. We're looking to hire your heritage railway for a secret mission. We want to transport a conceptual artwork all the way down your track from Kelmsley to Sittingbourne. If you do your duty correctly and perform exactly to our specifications, we will give you shed loads of money. Well, I've never been one to turn my nose up at a brass farthing, so I email them back. The conditions as they set them out were rather peculiar, but acceptable to all the members. One. No men whatsoever would be allowed to participate in the process. That was okay. The men folk could all sit in the cafe drinking tea for the duration. They quite like doing that anyway, as it happens. Two, the conceptual artwork must be transported in a wagon with curtains over all the windows. It's critical that no one sets eyes upon the artwork. I imagined we could organise that. We've stitched a few flags and banners in our time, I'll say. Three, you must not engage any of us Scandinavians in conversation until after the artwork has been successfully delivered. That's no problem either. I've dealt with a few uffy individuals in my time. Best let them get on with it. (laughs) 
On the day in question, the menfolk gathered in the cafe and we met the Scandinavians at the front gate. There was two of them, a man and a woman, both dressed in almost identical jack black costumes. They had blistering blue eyes. And their blonde hair was teased up something rotten, like ice cream cones from the far off future. Me and Peggy were asked to cover our eyes with blindfold things, similar to the ones they hand out on an aircraft when you fancy a doze as they loaded their secret cargo into the chosen wagon. The female Scandinavian handed me a piece of paper. On it she'd written, It's a nice day, so me and Sven have decided to walk back to Sittingbourne along the Saxon path. We've been informed that the views out over Milton Creek are pleasing. Whatever you do, don't look at the conceptual artwork. I started up our trusty diesel engine, Victor, and off we went. easy, cursing at a steady five miles an hour. After all, we had a conceptual artwork on board and there's no telling how fragile they are. We were about halfway up the line, not far past the recycling yard on the left, when Peggy turned to me with a burning look in her eye. Dot, I can't stand it. I have to have a look. I have to know what this conceptual artwork is we're carrying. Look here, Peg, I replied. A deal's a deal. And what if they find out we've been peeking? How will they know? They are Scandinavians, after all. You're right, Peg. I'm dying to know myself. I'll stop the engine. We'll have a quick shifty. Just a quick one, mind. We dash back to the wagon, open the door slowly, and there on the floor is the conceptual artwork. Is that it? said Peggy. All that fuss over this? There on the floor of the wagon was a small mound of black sand and a half-opened can of sardines. Looks like fishly and vice, said Peggy. Fishy and what? said I. Fishley and Vice, a Swiss conceptual artist. I'll give you Fishley and Vice. Come on, I said. Let's crack on and get this lot delivered. I've been thinking of how we can spend that money. A few bedding plants, for starters. Sittingbourne Junction, the Scandinavians were already waiting for us. They had very long faces. Well, here's your artwork, as requested. Now where's our cash? Scandinavians muttered to each other, rocking back and forth on their heels in a most disturbing manner. Then the female turned to us and spoke in a voice of utmost disdain. You've destroyed the artwork, you Philistines. We should never have trusted you. They turned on their heels and started to walk away. Now, wait up a second, I said. No harm's been done here. Might have had a quick peek, but Peggy and me are as good as our word. We never tell a soul. Scandinavians stopped and faced us. This time the man spoke. It's a shame, yeah. We could have had a beautiful friendship, just like Humphrey Bogart and Claude Rains in that old Casablanca film they keep showing. But all that's done now. We're getting the HS1 back to London. At that, he dug in the pockets of his strange black uniform and after flinging a few paltry notes onto the platform, they strode away. Peggy turned to me with a regretful air. I reckon we right royally screwed up there. Never mind, said I, stooping to pick up the scattered five pound notes. At least this will pay for a tray of argaritum and a few red and white impassions. You see that wagon there, a lot of the uh, gardening department refuse has been put on it for uh, taking up the line. Well, there's so much <laughs> so much uh, gardening scraps up there, you might as well add to it. <laughs> the rail and the mills were part of our normal childhood. Um, you know, just to get from Milton into town, you had to walk down past Sittingbourne Mill, down past the mill wall, with the train going across the bridge there. And then all through the night, that's my 
most vivid memory is a small child lying in bed on a still night. You could hear the whistle and it sounded so lonely 